Hello, this is Andrea Spitaleri. I'm a researcher in uh, Sarafele Scientific Institute. And this is a demo presentation of the typical com terminal commands in, in used in Linux to perform analysis, to perform different tasks during the, the analysis. If you remember in the first webinar in the introduction on Linux, we also introduced the terminal commands. So this is actually the terminal. The first command that we normally use is, if you remember well, is ls, which basically what it does, just typing ls and with enter, it just, uh, it just make the list of a file present in, in one directory. If we want to know which directory, we do you remember the name of the the program the, the command is pwd so print working directory so it tell you the absolute path where you are now doing so if you want to say you want to understand the different options present in one terminal command if you remember uh, i told you about the command man so if you do man and then just go enter, the Linux it says, what manual page do you want? So you want to try man ls. This is the actual user command for ls, which tell you the name, list directory contents. It's the synopsis. So how to use the command, a description. So basically ls is list information about the files the current directory by default sort entries alphabetically if none of that options or nor sort is specified and so on you can go through all the different options using the space bar you see you go down you can go up using b down space up b if you want to exit from from there you see on the bottom you see Q to quit. So just use Q, it will quit. So then now, if you want to see, you want to create a directory, I, I mind you, the command is mk make dir. So of course, if you do mk dir without the name of the directory, it says, okay, Linux is complaining, it's missing something, it's telling you, it's missing the operand. So please try mkdir minus minus help well it tell you what it does it create directories if it doesn't exist and so on how but if you want to do more you remember you need to do man mkdir it will tell you everything's name synopsis description and so on so now you want to create a directory we do make dir and we do test as you see, Linux is not complaining at all. It's happy. It creates a directory test. One thing, if I do again, I want to create another directory called test, it will complain. It says, cannot create directory test. File exists. If you remember, for Linux, everything is a file, even a directory. So that's why it says file exists. So we need to change the name. So you, you can do easily. If you remember, Linux is a case sensitive. You just for instance, you can say test using the last character, using the lower T, it will do it. So now if you do ls minus L, which is long list T sort by time R reverts, you will see now two directory, yeah, which is one has a, a lower T in the end. So, so far, so good. Now we want to do If you remember, there are different command. You want to go in that directory. The name of the command is cd, change directory. Again, main cd, you will see there is no manual, but if you do minus help, it help you how to run it. So basically, what I do, I do okay. I am the directory, I see there are different 
files, the FN directory. I go to CD, I type test. Now, if I do print working directory, I am in the test directory. If I do CD dot dot, I will use the relative path. So what I'm saying now, what I'm doing now, I'm going back to the previous directory. So if I do CD dot dot, enter, then I print working directory, you see now I'm back to the previous original directory. So interestingly, if you do CD T capital and then use the tab space, bash terminal, it will tell you, it will suggest you which directory you want to go. It will tell you there is a test with the T on the end with the low capital, low character, test with O upper capital, and then tutorial. So for example, I won't say two. I put you, and then with the, if you still again use tab space, it will full complete the name of the directory. Typing enter will go in the tutorial directory. Again, print working directory is there. I want to see the files. I go ls minus ltr. I will tell you, okay, these are the files contained on my directory. Back again, cd dot dot. If you want to do now, I'm quite lazy. ls ltr is a nice command, but it's too long to type. What I can do, if you remember, is to use the command alias. Alias basically allows you to perform a particular task without typing all the, the command, but just typing one single one single um, alias. So basically, I want to create an alias, let's call LT, which is ls minus LTR H. H means the, the size of the files is a human readable. So Linux is not complaining. Now, if I do LT, it's like I'm doing ls minus LTR H, you see, it's the same way. And this is quite useful when, for instance, you want to see running command, but you want to do print all the different steps. As in the first webinar, I present you when you want to find how many Netscape running process are present in my computer. So if you do PSAUX, you see all the different running process. That's good. Now if I do PS AUX pipe, so the output, the, the standard output goes to the in as input in the grep command and I search for Firefox, I find all, I filter only the, pro the running process by Firefox. Good, so fast, good. But I want to know how many. So again, the output, so the standard output of this is the input of another command which is called this wc board count minus l a end up with just a number 58 so in my computer now are running 58 different firefox process i, I can even go without minus l it will be longer it, it, it says you something else but you want to know go, just go to man wc and you can re read all the different parameters a option you can use so far so good now for instance i want to create a file fine let's go to test you see now it's suggesting me two different directory go to this one here print working directory total zero there is no files touch let's call my file see now it's my file Something you should know, when you copy, move, or, re or remove a file, we, Linux, with respect to Windows, it does ask you to do. It will do it without complaining. So if you do, if we use, if we use a different command, I'm just removing, if you do remove, my file, it will do it. So 
it will not ask you want to i assure you want to remove the file it will not ask anymore it will just do it so that's quite dangerous if you are let's say is used to use windows where Windows basically one delete a file it's asking if you want to delete it then it put on the bin and then the bin you want to empty the bin so there are many many steps before really to delete the file so in that case uh, in, in that situation that scenario linux is more let's say dangerous if you remove a file but there is a work count work route you can do basically if you read the man very nice option which is called minus i which is basically prompt before every removal so basically if i do a file again my file now we, there is a file then we do remove minus i say my file now linux is asking remove regular empty file you can say no the file is still there so one thing i can suggest to you is to do an alias like basically call remove file so rm as like this so now if i do remove my file without using the option my e he will ask because we're using alias rm which stands for rm minus e now linux knows that you are asking if you want to remove or not you say okay remove it you can do of course the same for cp and for move so basically if you have for instance you have a file called let's recreate the file my file you want to copy my file in my file you will say is the same so we don't do anything let's create another file my file one you want to copy my file over another file which exists already it will not complain you will do it so again you will overwrite your existing file that's very dangerous again you can create an alias called cp equal to cp minus i is the same option before so now if you do like this it will ask you want to overwrite you can say no again you can do the same for move minus e so this is very important because when you use alias is not uh, you even you, you can even forget about minus e because you already put uh, as an important uh, parameter for your uh, uh, command and you will not lose any data or any other information so now we have two files you want to edit normally we use uh, many different uh, editor the wider user is vim then you put the name of the file and this is the file of course it's empty you go go insert and you can say hello world and then of course you can save and quit and then if you remember you can visualize the content of the file using cat it says what is inside again there is also another file of course nothing is empty but you can populate you can edit a file using uh, another common echo so basically you can say hello world 2002 for instance you can do redirect the standard output to the name of my file one or you can even create a new file called my file two so in that command in that string you what you're doing you are printing hello world 2002 by now see that printing on the terminal but you are redirect this printing on new file my file two which linux you will create with the terminal of linux will create for you immediately so now if you do ls tr you have or oh, lt as we did before the ls we have three different files then you can do my file one two which says which is inside but let's you want to append another string to the my file two 
You remember, you need to put a second arrow. You can put hello world 2023, for instance. Now you have two lines, hello world 2022, hello world 2023. If instead I do like this using just one arrow, what is happening now? Basically, what it does, Linux, it recreates a new file called my file 2 and just put the first line. So what do you say? Hello world to 2023. Instead of to print on the file, you can, of course, visualize on the terminal. This is typical echo, so you want to visualize on the terminal. Finally, few words on variable. So let's think about variable, say is a equal to. So what we did here is just basically define a variable value, say alio is, so basically the character a is equal to two. If you do echo dollar a, so basically we are calling back the value of the variable, what you will see now is two. If we do, and this is why Linux is terminal is case sensitive with the upper capital A, you will see zero empty because we didn't define A upper. So if we do A equal hello people, now if you do again equal A, we saw hello people. Now, if you do echo, echo, a, some, we can say something like this. What we have, we have basically we have do a combination of the two variables we defined previously. previously. So basically, we are just printing hello people to which is something like we we written two and two is now a. The bash terminal is also a calculator. The command for the calculation is bc. So if you go man bc, you say it's an arbitrary precision calculator language. So basically, if you do echo. To, 2 plus 4 pipe. So if you do like this, it prints la, uh, such we expected. So 2 plus 4. But if you do echo, 2 plus 4. So this standard put is the standard input of BC. So we do pipe. So we direct to the pipe. Using pipe, we do BC. This is what it does. So basically, Linux. So the bash did the calculation for you. So basically it did 2 plus 4 equal to 6. You can even do plus, you can even do subtraction, you can do any different multiplication and also you can also divide. In testing, if you do divide, you need to use, uh, you, you need to tell to BC we are dealing with the float. So you need to add minus L and you get 2 divide 4 is 0 0.5. If you don't use minus L, you get 0. So basically you get the integer. Finally, if you want to, if you remember the from the first webinar, we have the command called grep, which what it does, search for particular map for particular pattern inside a file. So for instance, I want to search for grep hello in uh, one of, on, in all of the files present in my directory. So I do star zero. Why? Because I, I still remember you. Linux is K is K sensitive. So we need to write precisely the match we are looking for. Again, zero. So if we don't remember the exact name, we can use, we can use minus i, minus i, what, hello, hello, 
to the files. Now it's printing, it's printing where it found a, the line. So what is minus E? Minus E, it tells to grab, don't be case sensitive. So basically it says ignore case distinction. So somehow, some, in some situations it's very important to use minus I, but some, in some situations it's dangerous. Finally, the last command is find. So basically, you find all everything in, in the directory. But if you go back, I want to find where is the file called my file, says find where here the name is my file. Say, look, my file is pressing directory called text. Perfect. Finally, loops and condition. For is the command used to print, uh, to make loops. It's quite straightforward to use. So for instance, we do for in, this is the syntax to, to count from one to 10, equal dollar one done. So basically it says it count from one to 10. We are saying for every I going from one to 10, equal one. So print the variable. So one, two, three, four, five, two, up to 10. So this is my very crash course, how to use the terminal and hope you like it.